There are some new insights today into the effect of dementia on the brain. The disease is often categorised by confusion, a lack of empathy and sometimes loss of speech. And Australian researchers have now shown why some dementia patients lose their ability to empathise. Miran Irish is the study's lead author and joins me now. Miran, thank you so much for dropping in this afternoon. This is extraordinary to find this sort of empathy aspect of the brain and how it's affected by dementia. What part of the brain are we talking about here? So we're talking about the frontal lobes of the brain. So these are the most evolutionary new places that have evolved in our brains. And basically the frontal lobes govern our ability to adhere to rules, to control our impulses, and it's also believed to be the seat of personality. So we're seeing an erosion of these really higher order brain regions that govern our ability to fo function socially and to interact in a successful interpersonal way. And our all dementia patients, can this frontal lobe area be affected by the disease or is it just some? How do you know? So dementia is a very, um, it's an umbrella term and it refers to many different syndromes. And so the syndrome that we're interested in is called frontotemporal dementia. And it seems that these prefrontal regions of the brain are really vulnerable to the pathology in this syndrome. So it seems to be that these social regions of the brain are preferentially targeted in this syndrome. Miron, you're mentioning this personality aspect and we've mentioned empathy. Mm -hmm. If this part of the brain is attacked, is vulnerable, like you say, does it mean that someone's personality either changes entirely, changes a little bit? How does that actually manifest itself in terms of behaviour? So it's interesting that some of the earliest hallmark features of this type of dementia are actually sparked off when a caregiver or family member will notice a change in the individual's personality. So they start to behave in, in somewhat bizarre ways that are out of keeping with their usual habits and preferences. And often what we see is a blunting of emotions. So the individual may react less empathically, say to the you know death of a pet, or if, an, if the carer has a bad day at work, the, the individual is less able to actually take their perspective and show compassion or sympathy towards them. And these can be subtle in the beginning, but then they become much more florid as the disease progresses. And one of the things I've always believed, or at least I thought was true, was that empathy particularly was something that you had to learn. You, you teach your kids empathy, you teach them what it's like to hurt something else and they don't want to be hurt, all those kinds of things. If it is learned, does it mean that it can be relearned by someone whose that frontal part of the lobe has been affected? So I think there are aspects of empathy that may actually be innate. And so I watch my toddler down in daycare and one day he had a fall and his little friends all rallied around and were patting and offering him toys. But I think it becomes much more sophisticated and then environmental influences actually help us to engage in much more sophisticated expressions of empathy. In the context of dementia though, because this is a neurodegenerative disorder, it it may actually be more advisable for the caregivers to modify their behaviour and to work around these changes in, that the patient is experiencing. Knowing that this attack is happening, this vulnerability on that part of the brain, for those caregivers, for the people living around that space where someone suddenly starts to sort of withdraw, doesn't show that same level of empathy, doesn't show that same level of connection, is this sort of research in a way uh, they can breathe a sigh of relief and know that this is just what's happening to someone's brain, there's nothing I can do to control it. And, and learn to somehow accept that space? Absolutely. I think this provides some definitive evidence that this is the disease. It's not the person's choice to behave in this way and that there's an organic reason behind these changes, which are so distressing and so um, challenging to maintain by the family and the caregivers around them. So knowing that it's of an organic nature, that it's something specific in the brain that's triggering off these behaviours, I think in some ways can offer some solace to the, the caregivers. Miran Irish, fantastic and fascinating research. Thanks so much. Thank you.